right, so this morning we are going to install a Reese Goose Box hitch. We are switching out from the Anderson. In fact, we already sold the Anderson, so I hope this goes well. Otherwise, we'll be out of luck without a hitch. But we ordered a Reese Goose Box in order to attempt to clean up our truck bed a little bit more, make it a little bit smaller footprint, and hopefully we'll get even a better ride. The ride with the Anderson and the uh, Trail Air Pin Box was pretty good, but from all the reviews, the Goose Box is better. So we decided we're going to give the Goose Box a try, see how it works, and then have the added bonus of having extra bed space in our truck. Because this hooks directly to the fifth wheel, and the only thing required in the bed of your truck is a ball. So once you unhook, you can flip out the ball, and you've got the entire bed of your truck for use for whatever you're doing. You don't even have to unbolt anything like with the Anderson. So while the Anderson was good, it used up a bunch of our room in the bed of the truck, and it took a little bit more effort than we wanted to for taking it out and then of course you had to store it. The Reese Goose Box on the other hand is going to mount directly to the fifth wheel. It's going to always be attached to the fifth wheel and not have an issue with that. Um, then the other nice thing about the Reese Goose Box is it's actually approved by all the manufacturers and the frame manufacturers to be used on their trailer. So we'll take a quick look here. As you see that's the Goose Box. I've got it propped up fairly level. I'll probably have to adjust it a little bit but it's propped up in the bed of the truck, strapped down so that I can back it into place on the trailer. This thing weighs a lot, and I don't want to be lifting it and trying to put bolts in it, and neither does the wife, Candace, so we will uh, we'll try to get it up there with the, with the truck, at least reasonably close, and then lift it into place as needed. Over here, you can see um, when we pulled off the old pin box, it was pretty rusty, so I went ahead and got some... Uh, rust preventative primer, sprayed it on the pin box attachment point, did the inside as well. It's not a great paint job, but what it will do is keep it from rusting anymore. Uh, and that's all I was after, really. This is just a big piece of steel that gets beat up. So I wasn't looking for a super duper paint job, but I was looking for no more rust, just because, you know, rust is not necessarily a good thing. So, that's all prepped and ready to go. If yours doesn't have rust, then obviously you don't need to paint it. And so now we're going to back up the truck and try to get it lined up. We've got the hitch in the truck. We've got it blocked up. We've got it close to where it needs to be. As you see, we've got not much clearance here, so I'm hoping that by the time we get done and put air in there, that there's actual clearance. Otherwise, this will not work. So. That's one thing to evaluate and be careful with. Um, one tip here for moving this thing back and forth to get the bolts lined up, all right, I'm blocking up the rear end with blocks, but I also left it on a piece of cardboard from the box because that allows you to just grab the piece of cardboard and pull it back or pull it forward. And now that, I, now that I've got it here and trying to do it, it's not going to work. But you can actually move the cardboard and it'll move the, the hitch by dragging it on the bed of your truck. So I'm just trying to get us lined up to where we can get these bolt holes in here. We're almost there. And it says use it one bolt hole lower than your normal hitch. Well, I don't really have a one bolt hole lower because my normal hitch was bolted into all three of these because it was a trail air. But we're about on it now. Almost there. I guess we need to go a little bit further. And then push it down a little bit. A little bit more than I wanted to. I think we went past our holes. Yep. Probably going to be the hardest part of it is getting these first couple bolts in. I think we're about there. All right, so we got it to move up with the front landing jacks, front landing gears, and I pulled it back a little bit further. Um, again, that's really convenient to have the cardboard so it's not dragging on the bed of your truck. So I pulled it back into place, slapped the bolts in there. Should the bottom bolts be a little bit. Now this bottom bolt 
it's not really a bolt hole per se. It's got a range of places it can go. So, I'm just trying to put it in the wrong way. It's not going in quite as smoothly as the top one, but I think it'll be fine. And the washer's just a little bit in the way, so I'm sure that'll crunch down a little bit. So now we've got four bolts in it. In the front, washers. And it should be just a matter of tightening these down and then finishing putting everything where it needs to be, including emergency breakaway and all that. This thing is supposed to be torqued down to 210 foot-pounds, I think, so you need a big torque wrench for it. Yep, 210 foot-pounds. Uh, always good to have an impact wrench with you. We carry an electric impact wrench, believe it or not, from Harbor Freight, and it has done great for us. Uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on an electric one, and the Harbor Freight one has been able to do everything we wanted it to do, especially when it comes time to do the wheels any type of maintenance, but life is good so far. So, we'll go ahead and finish bolting this up and see where we're at. So, torque wrench, very, very, very good thing to have when you're RVing for your lug nuts and for everything else. This is straight up Lowe's Cobalt. Uh, it works great. It has a range up to 250 foot pounds of torque. I've had it since we started because it works good on the lug nuts for the RV. that the, uh, the impact gun didn't quite make it to 210 pounds. If I wanted to keep going at it, it probably could have. But 210 is pretty, pretty hefty. Oh, I just scratched my brand new paint job. So, so what? What you move forward for? I moved forward because there wasn't enough range to really yank on the torque wrench. Oh, okay. So, I was just letting our audience know. Okay. <laughs> I just got the truck out of the way because this is a lot of torque and it was a tight space. There you go. Now, I'm kind of cheating by putting my end wrench against the bolt inside here so that I don't have to hold on to it too. I guess I could have Candace hold it, but let's put it here. And of course, we're ready for the problem putting it there is you also got to get back loose. It's just a good
right, so first observation. This is with no air in the bag. We got four and a half inch clearance there. And on the other side, we've got six and a half, six, six and a half inches of clearance. So we're a little unlevel right now, but we've got clearance. Um, first thing I did, first thing I noticed is we're closer to the trailer. I might have to see if I can find an offset ball for that. I'm not sure if I like that, but it actually pulls us six inches closer to the trailer or so. And maybe four or five. But the big deal is that I can no longer open my compartment. And if I lay, lower the tailgate, I can barely get by. So I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure it's going to affect my maneuverability in a positive way. But I need to go get some safety chains because I forgot about that and they didn't come with safety chains. Attach the safety chains and finish doing the full-blown hookup and see what's going on with it. Put some air in the bag and make sure it works. And then we'll see where, where we're at from there. So what we ended up going with was a half inch chain and some hooks. These are all grade 70 so that they're pretty strong. That was the part of the problem of finding what we needed. And yeah, it should be able to, should disaster happen, we should be okay. I'm going to loosen this one up and kick it back a little bit because apparently I got it off center just a little bit. All I'm doing is moving where this chain is. It looks like it belongs and it's flush and all that good stuff. I'm actually going to match it to this other one. Let's make it down a little bit. Of course, on this side, everything's hanging in the way. I prefer it that direction, so now we'll go to the side and change it. You can film, stop. <laughs> All right. So now we're just going to mount the emergency breakaway. If we can get that together. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when you're on camera, it all goes wrong. Now, one thing to note, just make sure that there's nothing behind here when you're Speaker. picking a spot Speaker. to mount. Can't hear you. So make sure there's nothing behind here when you're picking a spot to mount it on. Maybe we'll get through here. get the emergency breakaway mount so that should the trailer break off here and go running down the road this will trigger the brakes on the trailer so that's what that's for now we've got the Reese completely the Reese goose box completely installed other than trying to track down the uh, the tow chains it wasn't that big a deal probably an hour to install it maybe at that if you've already removed your your uh, previous pin box so plan an hour maybe two hours remember to order the uh the tow chains or have tow chains ready readily available now we're going to go ahead and hook up uh once we're done we'll take a final shot of it and see how it tows so here we are all hooked up we got the hitch on the ball the safety chains laying in the bed the reese all bolted in um I'm not convinced I got more room in the bed of the truck now with it all in there. So we'll have to check it out. The trailer seems to be sitting a little off level. I'm not sure why, but 
it does that from time to time once I get back to something level I'll go ahead and check it out and see what's going on it may just be the way we're sitting here um, I don't really see much of a yellow sticker down there I'm supposed to be seeing a green one actually so I'm gonna drive it over to the other campground a couple miles away and then we'll see from there before what's going on I may have to call Reese I don't think my and I don't think my pin weight's over 4,000 pounds, so I don't think that's it. Let's figure it out. After the first run with this Reese Goose box, we decided that it leaked. Then we replaced the valve, and that valve leaked too, the one with the automatic blow off. So I went ahead and just plugged it, put a brass plug fitting in there. So after dealing with the issues that I had with the blow off valve or the pressure relief valve that came with the Reese Goose box, I replaced it with this brass plug, standard plumbing brass plug. That cured the leaking issues. Now you can see that we maintain our air at the proper level and we can actually put more pressure in it than what they allowed with the other valve. So it works out much better for a much better ride and keeps us in the right spot. So if you look, we now have about seven or eight inches of clearance between the bed. That's a lot of clearance. After I took the airbags off my old truck, I had the airlift compressor, which uh, was left over. I didn't sell that. So what I decided to do, because this is a basically an airbag, is I'm going to, excuse the truck there, I'm going to add the airlift compressor. So what I did is I got a different fitting that has uh, the right size hole and fitting in it, and the airlift adapter for the airline and I'm going to put that on there and then add the airlift compressor. Alright so this is try number 427. Uh, we got a straight connector instead of an angled connector because the angle one didn't fit in the space that it was going into. The the 90 degree angle actually uh, ran into some obstruction so now we're going to try the straight connector and see if it works on this goose box. Our final evolution of the Reese goose box setup we went ahead and installed a wireless one compressor. This was on my old suspension on my old truck. So I installed the wireless one compressor, wired it to power, it runs actually into the trailer. And then I drilled a hole through the pin box right here and ran the airline through there. The airline goes down to our fitting right there that used to have the pressure relief that never worked right and always leaked that I had plugged with a brass fitting. So that connects the compressor to our air and gives us the ability to adjust on the fly. The wireless one actually comes with a remote that works in the truck. And instead of having to hook up a compressor and connect the compressor to the air inlet there, I don't have to use that anymore. I've got it there for backup, but I don't have to use it. So what I do now, simply from the truck, you can see that eh, I need air, right? I'm on the yellow on the thing. So I've got my memory set. Go ahead and hit two. You'll hear the compressor fire up. So that can add air. It can give us about an inch and a half to two more inches of clearance and it can change the ride depending on the road quality. The last thing I want to show you is that I've got, and this goes for every hitch, not just this hitch or every hitch that requires the brake to be attached. I simply put my emergency brake away on a carabiner. That way I can hook it right to the tow tie down in the bed of the truck. So there you have it. That's the final evolution of our goose box install. Works out pretty well gets rid of the requirement for a compressor and gives us the ability to control the ride as we go down well, the road. Well, as you may can tell from the beginning of the video to now, this project has taken quite a while. It's been worked on a little bit here, a little bit there, had to order some parts, had to work on it um, when I had a chance to. So it's been quite a while. We've put quite a few miles on 
uh, with the Reese Goose Box, both with it manually inflated and with the auto inflator, which is a nice, uh, nice add to the system, by the way. Uh, and we've got, I would guess, somewhere around 15,000 miles on it now. Uh, as you may know, we started out with an Anderson hitch and a trail air pin box, and we switched out to this Reese Goose Box in order to hopefully gain some bed space and to get a smoother ride. Uh, we got a smoother ride for sure. I would give this a uh, nod over the Anderson and the Trail Air as a combination. Much smoother ride. What we didn't gain is space in the bed. We actually lost space in the bed. And we lost space in the bed because this thing, uh, it, when, you, when you see that sitting in your bed of your truck, it sits lower than the Anderson and Trail Air combination. So it swings and it hits stuff that are, that are uh, it hits stuff that's sitting in the bottom of the bed. In fact, it has completely tore up our cooler that we normally sit back there. Now we don't keep a cooler back there. So if you buy this hitch thinking you're going to gain bed space over the Anderson, you're not. It's going to actually take up more room. And I also don't think it maneuvers quite as well as the Anderson trail air combination. Um, it kind of limits your ability to turn uh, those extreme angles, which you probably shouldn't be doing anyways. But if you get into a spot where you need to turn an, an extreme angle, I think this Reese Goose Box limits it compared to the Anderson. But it does give you a nice smooth ride. And if that's what you're after and you don't need the extra bed space, it works. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, as usual, subscribe and hit the bell for the notifications. Uh, thanks for watching.